let's continue our session and uh, what we are what we are already covered in the previous session and when can tell me hello i guess we are talking about the network scanning part right yes sir. yes sir okay guys So we are already covered few things which related to like a uh, network scanning and uh, we already see some type of command like uh, how we can scan the network and find out the different types of thing which are available on that particular network with the using our command session. Okay, so let's we'll talk about the OS fingerprinting. That is the next thing which we need to cover and get the details about the uh, OS related details of that particular IP address as well as the target our target so in that case firstly we need to understand like a, what is the os fingerprinting and the banner grabbing things so there are two terms it's basically used for gathering the details which is related to like a uh, fingerprinting details yeah it means the os details so at that time the os fingerprinting is basically a technique used to identify the information of the operating system running on a target machine if you want to gather only the information like what type of operating system is basically working on that particular machine target machine as well as the ip address so just use a fingerprinting concept and after that you can easily find out like what type of things are basically working over there so how you can check it with the using of like hyphen sv version scan so if you remember that guys uh, in the previous session once we are just use a command that is a hyphen s and capital v that is a version scan to find out the different types of versions of the service which is working on that particular ip address so that time we are we got a detail yeah, we got a result that is a os detail that is a linux os right so this kind of thing we can easily get it by the using of like a fingerprinting with the using of command like hyphen s and capital v but remember this thing guys once you are just planning for to gather the details about the like a banner grabbing so banner grabbing is similar to the os winger printing but actually banner grabbing basically is detailing yeah, determining the services that are running on the target machine if there any type of service is basically running on the target machine and you just want to gather that particular information in the depth part so you just use a banner grabbing thing with the using of hyphen o command so we are already run that command into the previous session like hyphen o and after that we will got the details like thunder version like a os detail like a different types of domain names also which are working on that particular ip address so this type of detail you can easily gather by the using of like a banner grabbing so this kind of thing yeah this kind of procedure is basically using for uh, getting the details about that particular os so guys just look at here if uh, the fingerprinting is basically defined yeah divided into two part the first one which is called as a active os fingerprinting and the second one which is called as a passive os fingerprinting we have two types of fingerprinting in the active os fingerprinting as well as a banner grabbing and map can easily perform active banner grabbing for os detection and map allowed to send a tcp udp packet and observe the response there from the target host if you want to gather this type of thing so you can use an map command and after that you can easily gather that information which is working on that particular machine so for the using of that one yeah for the implementation of that particular os fingerprinting so you just use a command that is a nmap hyphen o and the ip address so guys this command we are already run in the previous session so this time i'm not going to run this command and uh, not going to show you the result again because we are already see that result in the previous session okay so the next thing that is a passive os fingerprinting details so how we can gather a passive os fingerprinting or a banner grabbing so the passive os fingerprinting performed by the analyzing network traffic along with a special inspection of the time to live that is called a ttl value and the windows size so this is completely depending upon the ttl value which is called as a time to live value and uh, windows size which is actually uh, working on that particular server so how you can gather that particular thing with the using of some command that is a basic command you can 
can use or a ping command and after that you can get that details from the operating system even then once you, how you can justify like what type of operating system basically working on the basis of like ttl and the window size value so for that uh, determination you can use like if the ttl value is basically a 64 so you can say that like this is a Win linux operating system and the window size basically the tcp window size that is 45840 for the linux operating system the next one that their detail value is 64 again and sometime if you got a tcp window size that is 5720 so you can say that like this is a google customized linux free bsd that is again a, a type of like 64 ttl value okay guys just remember one thing if you got a, any type of value which is near of 64 like a 58 as well as a 60 as well as 62 so this is also based on a linux but that is a customized linux okay so just remember this thing and this time free bsd is basically taking a window size that is 65535 and uh, the this is called a free bsd Another one that is a Windows XP. If there are any type of server is basically using a Windows platform. So in that case, you will get the TTL value that is a 128 as well as sometimes you can also got a 120, 118, 11, um, 122 as well as 124 sometimes. And that window size is basically taken by this particular server that is a 65535. The Windows Vista, Windows 7, as well as a, you got any type of Windows server which is working on that particular IP address, so you can easily get the detail value that is a 128 and the Windows side which is taken by that particular server that is 812, 8192. Yeah, near of 8192 is also a type of server. The next one that is a Cisco router. If you got any type of router details, like uh, not exactly a Cisco router, is there any other routers are basically also available like Amazon and something else. So this is again, uh, uh, you got a TTL value that is 225 and the TCP value which is taken, your TCP window side which is taken by that particular IP address that is 4128. Now, the part is how you can find out, how you can uh, get the result, yeah, how you can find out, yeah, how you can analyze like what type of IP address it basically use that particular server. So just open your CMD guys and just put the command so you can easily get it. So I'm just going to share my screen right now. <clears throat> so what is the command you need to use? You need to use a ping command, it's simple. And with the using of ping command, you can easily get it like what type of uh, server is basically used by that particular IP or particular server. Okay, so just tell me guys uh, uh, for the google.com if I'm going and check the google.com So what do you think google.com is using a Linux or a Windows server? Windows Windows, okay So if I'm just going to check like the ping so just use a ping command so after that you will get a TTL value that is a 120. So you are right. That is a Windows server, but that is a customized Windows server. Okay. The next one that is a Wipro.com. What do you think about the Wipro.com? Quick. Just give me the assumption. Don't check on your machine. Sir, Windows. Windows. Okay. Let's check the Wipro.com. Wipro.com is basically using a router services. You can see the TTL value. Okay, let's try with the last one. That is a uh, www. Sorry, ping facebook.com. What do you think about the facebook.com? Anjan, don't check on your machine, guys. Just remember this thing. It's a cheating. Sir, I think Windows again. Windows. I'm not sure, but. Okay. Uh... So why are you saying always the Windows operating system? Is there any specific reason? No, sir. Just an assumption. Just an assumption. Okay. Not an issue. So if just click, click to OK, then I'm, if you just press the enter, so you will get the result. That is a, a Facebook is basically using a Linux operating system. That is a customized Linux. Okay. So according to this, like uh, you can easily find out like the uh, operating system which is used by that particular servers and just remember this thing guys if you are using a windows operating system windows server it means the windows operating system as using on that particular play it means that server is basically a most secure type of server 
Facebook server is also secure because that language, uh, the Facebook website is basically designed over the PHP language. That's why it is uh, published over that particular Linux server. Yeah, hosted on that Linux server, but the uh, Windows server is basically using a ASP.NET language. So the Wipro.com is basically working on that particular language that is a ASP like .NET language. That's why that uh, uh, server is basically using like a uh, another like a uh, router services as well as they are also used by the Windows server. Even then Google is also using a Windows server because the application, yeah, Google.com is basically designed over the language that is a ASP.NET. So that is completely depending upon the security that is completely depending upon the language which is used by that particular company. So I hope so the point is clear, like how you can find out the different types of detail which is like a OS, right? For the OS, uh, for the passive OS fingerprinting. The technique is clear, right? Yes, sir. Right. So the next thing that is the HPing 3 tool, guys. And with the using of HPing 3, you can easily get the details also. So how you can use that HPing 3. So HPing 3 is basically a type of tool and that tool is basically giving you the details. Even an HPing 3 is also a type of tool which is used for the DOS attack. So just remember this thing, HPing 3 is basically a type of volume uh, is used, a type is used uh, this tool for performing the DOS attack on the basis of volume based attack for the crashing of server by the sending of multiple any yani huge amount of packet and if the server is not uh, able to reply all the requesting packet which is sent by the users at the same time so at that point the server is going to crash out. So this kind of thing is also used by the HPing 3. So just remember this thing, HPing 3 tool is basically a hybrided tool, but this time we are using HPing 3 tool only for gathering the information about the network. So at that point, we can use a scan like a hyphen one, hyphen A, hyphen eight for the scan purpose and uh, one to six hundred is basically a port number which is defining by this in this command. Hyphen S is basically sending the synchronization synchronization packet hyphen f is basically the fin packet hyphen p is basically a push packets push flag sorry not a packet and the u is basically a urgent flag so with the using of that command you can easily scan everything so hyphen one is most of the time is using for sending the icmp packets so let's see and get the result yeah right div page Windows is more secure. Uh, only for the server of the hosting, not uh, not for the uh, like operating system. Okay, guys. So let's see how we can use the uh, uh, HPing three for the scanning part. So just wait a minute. I'll just start my server, and after that, we'll show you like how you can use that things. Okay, so firstly, we need to check the IP address of the target machine of the target uh, of a target. So firstly, just use a command that is rp scan hyphen L. Press enter. So finally, I got the IP address that is 91.134. That's great. So just use the hping3 command, guys. So just use hping3 hyphen H. If you don't know about this tool, just use a hyphen H for getting the option, which is uh, helpful to you for getting the details like what type of option you can use for the uh, scanning part so just press the enter and after that you can see here 
the S is for the synchronization packet, the A is for the ACK packets, and <clears throat> XMAX scan. You can also done the XMAX scan from there. Even you can also uh, done the uh, Y scans. Like uh, if you want to get the get the details about that particular firewall with the sending of uh, double multiple packets about the X scan. So you can use the Y scans at that time. So push scan, there is push flag, you can send the other scans you can also use. Okay, okay, the my hyphen I is basically ICMP packet mode, the hyphen 8 is basically the scan mode. If you open the scan mode, you can also like capture the packet with the using all of hyphen 9, listen mode. Okay, so this kind of thing you can use for the verbosity, you can use a hyphen V, capital V. So just look at on the screen, like how we can use the HPing 3 guys. HPing 3 hyphen 1. Now this time I'm just only going to send the ICMP packet at this time. So just put the IP address that is 192.168.91.134 and just use a hyphen V, capital V for the verbosity. So we can easily check like what type of things is basically going on on that particular machine. So now this time it is sended a ICMP packet for the confirmation here yeah, for the checking of these packet you can capture this packet over the wireless like Wireshark by the using of Wireshark. Just look at here. The ping and the reply, the ping and the reply, the request packet is sent and the reply is basically coming. Like this kind of thing is basically done by this particular ICMP. So if you want to check like this machine is basically active on that particular uh, network or not. So with the using of that one, like uh, hyphen one. So with the using of hyphen one, you can send the ICMP packet and just wait for the reply. If the reply is basically coming on. So you can say these type of IP address is basically working on that particular machine. Clear guys? Yeah. Okay, so what is our next command? The next command we can use, that is a hyphen A. So for the hyphen A is basically send it the, only for the acknowledgement packet. If you are just using a hyphen A, so that is used for the acknowledgement packet. I just wait a minute. Hello. Okay, so um, this time I'm just going to use like hyphen A and with the using of hyphen A, we can easily scan the acknowledgement packets only. We can easily send the acknowledgement packets, right? So just use a command hyphen A and just press the enter. And after that, you can see here the acknowledgement packet are basically going and you can see like the acknowledgement and because of uh, why we are... Uh, why we are receiving the RHT, yani ki reset packet, because there is no connection basically established with this machine. That's why every type of port is basically sent me the reset packets. Right, guys? This thing, I guess we are already uh, discussed in the previous session. Like if you are just sending a, if firstly you are just sending a request, uh, requesting packet as a form of like synchronization, after that you will get the response with the using of ACK for creating a three-way handshaking, right? Yes, so now I'm just use and modify the command that is a hyphen eight. So I hope to remember, uh, I hope so guys, you remember this command, this option that is a hyphen eight is basically a scanning things. And I'm just going to scan the port that is starting with the one and ending with the 500. So I'm just going to scan the port, which is available arranged between the one to 500. But for that, firstly, we need to send a synchronization packet. That's after that, it will give me some type of result. So that's why I'm just using a hyphen S for sending the synchronization packet uh, to that particular IP address or yeah, to that particular target machine. So we will get that result. 
just press the enter and you can see here all the port which is active on that particular ip address so we will get the result on this particular screen that is uh, this one so these are all the port which is active and you can see here if the port is basically active like 319 is basically active port so you can see get the result and you can easily get the name of that particular port uh, rather than you can get only the requesting and the reset and the ack packets why it is uh, sending this type of flags because this time again we are sending the requesting packet but the requesting packet is basically received by that particular server if the server is basically ex uh, able to accept that particular request for our side so just look at here my machine is basically sending the synchronization packet to the every port which is available in the list of the range like 1 to 500 but if the uh, available range is not capable to respond so it is sending me the reset and the ack packet for the acknowledgement like we are not able to uh, accept your request at this time right guys yes sir great guys so this kind of thing you can easily use okay so what is our next command we can use and get the details about that particular machine target machine so i'm just going to again modify the command that is a uh, now this time i'm just using and i'm just sending the packet that is uh, like the fin flag if you want to send a fin flag if you want to send a uh, push flag if you want to send a urgent flag so these are the flags which uh, which is Send it by the attacker sometime for getting the request. So, up you have to pay to in a via the fin flag, push flag, and the urgent flag. Just press the enter and you will get the result on the screen like this. Is there any type of packet uh, which you want to see like in the depth part? So you can just select the packet and after that you can see here the transmission control protocol is basically send the flags that is related to like the push reset and the sorry push flag, uh, urgent flag and the reset uh, fin flag, right? This type, this is the flag type. You can get the request here. Clear guys? So this is a, uh, this is again another way to get the details about that particular target operating system, your target IP address. So if you are gather any type of IP address on the net target is specific, so with the using of that one, you can easily gather the information about that particular machine. So I hope so guys that both are the uh, concept are clear to all, like how we can scan and how we can gather the information uh, about the target machine, right guys? Okay, so for the confirmation of the three-way handshaking, now this time I'm just using an nmap command and will show you like how you can create the TCP scan with the using of like nmap. So if you just using a hyphen S and capital T, so at this time, this is, is uh, going to create a TCP handshake. It means three-way handshaking at this time. So that's 91 and 134. I guess uh, this command I already used in the previous session, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so not so big deal. So okay so just leave it okay so i hope so the all things are clear like how we can gather the details let's see what is our next thing okay so the next thing we can use a, another multiple tool for gathering the uh, banner grabbing that is a, another tool which is name is a x probe 2 so the Xpro 2 is basically a type of tool, guys, which is used for gathering the OS fingerprinting. So how we can use the Xpro? Firstly, you need to search is there Xpro is basically available on your machine or not. So with the using of like where is Xpro? P R O B Xpro 2. Just press enter. So you can see here my Xpro is basically available in my machine. So that side is showing me in the 2018 and the 19 version of the Kali, the Xpro is not an inbuilt tool. So you, if you want to download that tool, just use a command that is the apt get install and the Xpro 2. So after that, you can easily download that tool from the external sources. Okay. So what is our next thing? The next thing is basically we can gather that details with the using of like Xpro. So how we can use the Xpro? Just use the Xpro, P-R-O-B-E, Xpro 2. And after that, just put the IP address that is 192.168.91.134. Just press the enter and after that, just wait for the result. So firstly, it is scanning via the three, 13 commands. You can see here, it is using the 13, uh, 30 scans. 
like so the first scan which is used by this particular tool that is the icmp ping scan it is send the icmp pinging packet to that particular target machine and just try to find out what is the uh, os details are basically available on that particular target machine the tcp ping scan it is used the udp ping scan used the information gathering that is a ttl with the calculation like ttl distance calculation is it uh, is used by this particular tool the information gathering that is a port scan on the basis of tcp and the udp port scan it is trying to find out the details about the port numbers about the machine the icmp eco packet is sent by this the icmp t stamp packet that is a fingerprinting module the icmp mas packets and the icmp port unreachable packets the tcp handshake it is also used for uh, creating the handshaking and getting the details the tcp reset packets it is sending for getting the details sometime with the using of reset packet we can get the details sm by the using our smb module we can get the details and the snmp that is another protocol which is used for getting the details so this kind of 13 modules are basically used at 13 uh, searches modules are basically used by this tool that is xpro2 and after that it will give you the result you can see the result here that is it is defining like it is using a free bsd that is 4.9 so why it is giving me this type of thing because the, that is scanning the everything and after it will give me like that server is basically based on the free bsd clear guys yes sir okay so the another tool which is available in the list that is a p0f so guys this tool is basically called as a passive uh, way for gathering the details like Xbox Two is basically the active scanning tool in which once you are just using the Xbox Two, so every type of packet which is sent by this tool is basically captured. Maybe if the server is basically captured the tool, so they can easily understand like this type of method is basically using for gathering the details. But the P zero F is basically a tool which is called as a passive fingerprinting tool and in this tool the passive tcp stack fingerprinting tool p0f can attempt to identify the system running on the machine that send the network traffic to the box it is running on or to a machine that shares a medium with the machine it is running on p0f can also assist the analysis analyzing other experts of the remote system so how we can use the p0f with the using of some interfaces that is uh, that is based on the listening mode like a prometheus mode so if you want to use the p0f firstly you need to find out like what type of interface is basically working on your machines so firstly we need to find out the interface so firstly we need to check is there p0f are basically available in my machine or not to so p0f just put where is p0f press enter so it is giving you the path like where is the p0f is basically installed so my p0f is basically installed in my machine okay so this is again a, a type of tool guys in the 2018 and the 19 version of kali that is not a pre installed tool so if you want to gather that tool from there so we can use the command so you can use the command that is the apt get install p0f and after that you can get the details right so but this time we can only use a command that is a p0f because the p0f is already enabled in my machine so firstly we need to find out like what type of uh interfaces are basically available in my network so i'm just using a hyphen l capital l guys so with the using of capital l press the enter so you will get the all details which is related to like a uh, interfaces so just look at here the name that is ats0 the description part the ip addresses the name that is any and the other details the name is a lo and the ip address so if you got the any type of ip address of that particular uh, attacker's machine this is my attacker machine actually so if you are just uh, get the details about the ip address so that interface are basically working on your machine so i so in my machine there is only one ip address is one interface is working properly over the internet that is ets0 so how we can use that thing with the using of p0f just use a p0f and just use hyphen i for assigning the ets0 interface and after that just use a hyphen p so guys hyphen p is basically called as a prometheus mode and the working on the prometheus mode is basically to capture the all packet which is sent by that particular uh, browser to the ip address and if the browser is basically captured if the ip address is basically uh, open every is the is the ip address basically open the any websites so after that we can get the details on this particular uh, terminal so how we can get it so first for that implementation you need to open the browser first
and after that you just type uh, any url like www.crow.in so i'm using a website that is a crow.in for getting the details but before pressing the enter i'm just starting that premises mode for the listing the packet so after that just press the enter and once you just press enter just look at here all the requesting packet is basically captured by that particular tool that is a p0f So now guys, just look at here, the detail you can get from that particular tool. That is the first thing that is server IP and the use port. So what is the server IP? The server IP is basically that is 35.224.213. This is the server IP guys. And this IP is basically using a 443 port. That is a connection. The second uh, thing you can get that is a running OS. So the running OS is a Linux OS. The third detail you can get it that is the parameters is there any parameters it basically used so that is a generic parameter is basically used that website the device uptime you can gather the device uptime guys so let's check the device uptime so just scroll to upside even and you can also get the raw signatures so this is a raw signature okay device uptime let's check the device uptime ACK synchronization. <laughs> Just look at this. Where is uptime? Where is uptime? Just look at here. This is uptime. Clear, guys? The server is started uh, 11 days and 50, 15 hours and 11 minutes before. The next thing you can get the connection between both of them. So we can easily get the connection between both of them. Okay. And the next thing that is the raw signature. So we can also get it the raw signature. So this kind of things and this kind of detail you can easily gather by the using or like T0. So at that time, the, the uh, like crawl.in as well as the any server, which is your target server is not understand. You will not get any type of details. Like you are sending a requesting packet. Yeah, yeah you are uh, want to get the details about that particular OS, which is working on that particular machine, right? So this kind of thing you can easily hide with the using of like P0F. Clear guys? Yes, sir. So in the penetration testing, if you are just going to talk about, there is one more tool is basically used for uh, getting these type of things. That is a uh, tool name that is a bub suit. So I guess guys, you are already aware about the bub suit. Like uh, this is a tool for getting the details, right? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So this is the part which is used by that particular uh, attacker as well as the network scanners, okay, uh, as well as the 
scanner team for find out the details which is working on that particular target machine. Guys, just remember one thing: there is multiple tools are also used, like a Windows-based tool, like a Angry IP scanner, the IP scanners. So these are the Windows-based tools which are used by the attackers sometimes, as well as the starting persons are basically use that tool for getting the details. So if you are just check, uh, Anu, this is for you. If you are just check and uh, get the details, like a tool details, so there is a tools which is you which is listed in the CS that is a angry IP scanner, the IP scanner. This is similar to like a Hping T and the Nmap. So I am only going to tell you guys the tool which is working, yeah, which is used by the attackers, yeah, which is used by the penetration tester in the live scenario. Okay. Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so if you want to gather like the if you want to do that process with the using of your mobile phone, so you can also do this thing with the using of your mobile phone. The first thing that is a network scanner. Uh, if you just go on the Play Store and search the network scanner tool, so the network scanner tool are available on the Play Store. You can download and scan the network. The Fing tool that is also a network scanner tool with the using of that one, you can also get the details. The next tool that is a network discovery tool, and the next tool that is a port joint. So these are the tools you can use and get the details about that particular network. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay, great. So our module is basically uh, finished. That is a network scanning module, and now we need to start the next module that is the innovation. So I'm just uh, so just just wait for five to ten minutes at the uh, break time. So just wait for ten minutes, and after that we will start and the module that is the innovation module. Okay. So if you have any type of doubt, so you can ask me. Okay. Okay, so firstly, we need to understand like what is the enumeration. So, enumeration, if we are just going to talk about in a Laman language, I'm going to explain. So, enumeration is just a type of information gathering in which we are just trying to gather the information which is hidden in that particular target operating system as well as the target IP. It means by the information gathering, you can easily access the details, but some type of information you can you can't handle it, yet you can't uh, gather from there. So that's why we are using an enumeration concept. So we can say that enumeration basically belongs to the first phase of the ethical hacking that is uh, come from the information gathering, and in this process where the attacker established an active connection within the victim or try to discover such as uh, try to discover <coughs> as much active attack vector as possible which can be used for exploit the system further so with the using of enumeration part we can easily attack on that particular server and we can get the details from there so this is again a type of information gathering phase guys and in which we are just gather the information more about that particular ip address okay so enumeration can be used to gain information on network shares SNMP data, if the data is not secured properly, IP tables, the username and the different system, the password policy list, the enumeration depends on the service data that the system offers. <laughs> so this can be done by that particular enumeration part. And in the enumeration, we can gather the enumeration about the DNS server. We can gather the DNS enumeration. Yeah, we can also perform that NTP enumeration that is uh, done over the protocol that is a network time protocol, NTP enumeration. We can also uh, perform SNMP enumeration that is simple network management protocol. And with the using of that one, we can find out if there the SNMP is basically secured or not. The Linux and the Windows enumeration, it means we can get the details about the OS and the other details. And the SMB enumeration, server block, server message block enumeration. It means is there any type of assembly server is basically over there so we can get the user names so we can get the different types of user which is available on that particular server 
so we can easily find out is there any type of exploit are basically available with a related all as smb innovation so we can also get it that details from there so this type of things we can easily gather with a part of like innovation so let's uh, us now discuss the tools and widely used for the innovation the first tool that is called a ntp soup tool for the ntp innovation guys so for the ntp innovation ntp suit is basically used for the ntp innovation this is a important because in a network environment you can find other primary server that help the host to update their time and you can do it without authenticating the servers yeah, without authenticating the system so how you can get it with the using of ntp dc this is a tool name guys ntp dc and hyphen c is basically denoting like uh, what type of procedure you are using so i'm just using a system info i just want to get the system info according to this ip address so just let's use like how we can perform this thing <laughs> So NTPD DC, uh, you can use that tool. And if you don't know about that tool, just use the man command before this tool. So it will show you like vendor specific NTPD control program. And this tool is basically deprecated. Please use NTPQ1 instead of you can everything NTPD DC used to do. It, uh, uh, and it does go using much more sane interfaces. So you can use a multiple interfaces like if you want to scan the IPv4 addresses, so just use a hyphen 4, hyphen 6 for the IPv6 addresses, hyphen C for the command one. So I'm just using a command one at that point that is system info. So with the using of that one, you can easily gather the details. So just try to use that is the NTP DC, and after that, just use a hyphen C for the system this info. To the IP address 192.168.91.134. Just press the enter and get the details to NTPT this connection diffused. Okay, so if you get this type of thing, it means there is a NTP port is basically available, but there is no connection uh, regarding that particular between NTP server to that particular machine. So that's why you will get this type of detail. <coughs> so not an issue. It's not so big deal. So what what is the next thing? We can check the another things also. Like, uh, is there any other uh, SNMP protocol are basically available so we can get the details. SNTP protocol illumination are basically available so we can get the details. So we can get the details of the other operating systems also, okay? So just wait a minute, I'll just check my connection. I'll... Okay, guys, so there is one more thing which is available in a uh, information gathering that is called uh, like Shodan. We can also use the Shodan search engine to find out the IP addresses. So if you are just type the NTP over here and just press the enter, so you will get a result. The other IP address which is using the NTP server. So 
So this IP address is basically uh, using an NTP server. Just copy the IP address and let come to my machine over your machine. And after that, just replace the IP address and check the system info details. Now just press the enter and wait for the result. So just look at here, nothing is saved, requested, timed out. Okay, let's try with another IP. Request time doubt, it is not receiving any type of details at this time. Okay, let's try with the another one. Okay, so IP address is not giving me any type of detail this time. Uh, maybe there is some problem to uh, creating a connection between my machine to that uh, particular server. So it's not so big deal guys, don't worry about that. Let's try to another one. So the another scan is basically called as the NBD scan guys. So the NBD scan is basically a type of scan. This is a command utility that tries to scan net bio. Okay, so this is a command utility that try to scan NetBIOS name server open on a local or a remote TCP network. And because it is the first step to finding open share, like if there any type of open share, if you want to get the NetBIOS name of that particular target IP address, so you can use a command that is a NBT scan. So guys, NBT scan is basically created a functionality on the Windows standard tool that is the NBT state and it works on a whole subnetting instead of the individual IP address. So it is not work over the single IP address, it is basically given by the subnetting of that particular series. So how you can use this particular series, just uh, look at the screen. You can use the NPT scan and after that you just need a uh, put hyphen R for the range and 192.168.223, sorry, that is 91.1 slash 24. So you need to give the particular subnetting like 24 and after that once you just press the enter so you will get the result that is 134 is basically a machine which is having a net bios name that is a meta exploitable so with the using of that one we can easily get the net bios name of that particular target machine so this is a server information this is a particular like uh, machine is basically a type of server and a user is basically a meta exploitable user okay clear guys Yes, sir. Okay, so the next thing we can easily gather by this uh, another command which is available in an illumination that is called the NM blockup. So the NM blockup is another tool, guys, and with the using of NM blockup is used to query net BIOS name and uh, and and uh, map them to IP addresses in a network using net BIOS over TCP IP queries. The option allows the name queries to be redirected or directed at a particular IP broadcast area or to a particular machine. All queries are done over the UDP. So all queries are basically working via this particular NM blocker with the using of UDP port size. 
so the command is basically anum block of hyphen a and hyphen is basically defining all the types of scan yeah on the basis of ip scan if you want to uh, perform the scan on the basis of ip so you can use a hyphen a hyphen a and just use the ip if you want to get the version of that particular ip server so you can just use a hyphen b so anum block up is very helpful command to enumerating domain workstation and the mac address and netbios work with the help of and netbios suffix is suffix as a state following the information uh, guys just Okay, so uh, the next thing, guys, uh, for the unique name, we can get the unique names. The workstation services we can get it if you got the address that is a zero, zero bit. So you can just easily identify that is a workstation service are basically working over there, and you can get the workstation name also. Zero three is basically Windows Messenger service. If you got the result as a zero three, once you are just scan this type of uh, using command. So you will get a result if it's a zero T. So you can say that that is a Windows Messenger service are basically working over that particular IP. Zero six is basically denoted like a remote access service. Two zero is basically denoted like file service, also called as a host record. Two one service is basically remote access service, client service. जैसे बोलते हैं. One B service is basically a domain master service, and most of the time the domain master service is basically working over that particular operating system or yeah, over that IP. One D survey is a master browser service. Even then, you can also get the group names which is available on that particular target IP. Like zero zero, you can also get the zero zero in a bulk station service. And if you are uh, get the result zero zero again in the result of that particular IP address, so you can say that that is a bulk station as a group address. The next one that is a one C is basically domain controller of a domain for a domain. And one E service is basically browser service selection. So these are all the services you can easily get it with the using of anum blocker. So how you can perform the anum blocker command? Let's see. So just use a command that is the anum blocker. Okay, spelling mistake. Anum blocker. 
space and just use a hyphen a if you don't know about the like options so you can use a hyphen h for checking the option so if you are just go and check so you can see that hyphen a is basically looked up by the ip so i'm just uh, going to check my details regarding that the ip addresses so that's why i'm just using a hyphen a hyphen b is basically a version scan hyphen n is basically net bios name scan so you can get and get, get uh, you can use that scan and get the details so just use the nm lockup hyphen a and just put the ip address 192.168.91.134 and just press the enter now look at here guys we got the details like 00, zero. as you know very well the first 00, zero is basically defining the unique name that is a meta exploitable the 03 the 03 is basically available it means windows messenger service are basically active on this particular ip address the 20 service is basically available it means the file service are basically available it means we can share the files with the using of that host okay the ms browser that is a 01 service so guys if you remember that the 01 service is basically a browser based service that is a master browser service you can say that that is a group based the another that is a 00 that is group assigning the work group 1d is basically assigning the master browser and one uh, e is basically defining the browser service that is the election service so these are all the services are basically working on that particular ip address clear guys <laughs> but yeah so what is our next thing our next thing is basically another command that is the smb map so guys with the using of smb map we can easily find out the number of users which is available on that particular target machine so is there any type of users are basically using the smb service over that particular target ip so we can easily get the details with the using of smb map command so smb map allow user to enumerate samba shared drives across their entire domain and list the shared drives drive permissions share contents upload and download functionalities file names, auto download patterns, matching, and even execute remote command. This tool was designed when pen testing is in mind and is intended to simplify searching for potentially sensitive data across large networks. If you want to planning about the penetration testing and you want to get the details, so you can use the SMB map. So how you can use it? The SMB map hyphen H. Hyphen H is basically denoting the host name. So if you want to scan any type of host on the basis of IP address on the basis of domain name, so you can use the command, yeah, you can use a particular uh, option that is a hyphen H. So with the using of hyphen H, you can easily get the details. So let's try to get the details with the using of SMB map. SMB map hyphen H and just put the IP address 192.168.91.134. Now just press the enter and get the result. Now look at here guys, it is showing me like this type of things are basically working over that particular IP address. Working that IP address that is 192.91.134.445, and you can just look at here the print and there is no access printer drivers. The TMP that is a read write permission. The OPT is basically no access. The permission is no access. You can't access the OPT directory. The IPCS uh, shell you cannot access that shell also. The admin you cannot access the admin services also, which is uh, working on that particular meta table server. So this type of thing you can get it. You have only the permission to access the TMP, getting a temp directory as a read write only. So this is the thing you can get it by the SMB map. Okay. So what is the next thing we can get it the SMB map? We can try to log in with the username and the password. So guys, uh, firstly you need to find out the username and the password. So for that you can use a command that is a uh, like what type of command you can use? You can use a brute forcing attack, right? So with the using of brute forcing attack, you can easily get like, is there any type of 
uh, users and their passwords are basically accessed on that particular server or not. So I will tell you like how you can perform the brute forcing attack later. But this time I'm just going to use a particular specific uh, username and the password. So, so the username and the password I'm just going to uh, represent with the using of that SMB map because I know the username and the password of this particular target machine. So that's why I'm just using uh, this time. 192.168.1.3 uh, after that i just need to put the domain name so you need to assign the domain name for the checking purpose so i'm just using a, a domain name that is meta exploitable just copy this domain name and just put it here after that just use a hyphen u hyphen u is basically defining the username so with the username you can The hyphen u username is msf admin and the password hyphen p is also the msf admin hello Okay, now just look at here after using this type of command, uh, we will get the details like the disk and the permission and the comments as the attribute. Now the system directory, system shell, we can access, we can only having a permission after the username, after the login with this particular domain via the username MSF admin and the MSF admin, that is a read only permission as a printer direct, direct driver. The next one, TMP, that is a read write permission, which are already having. And the OTT, that is only the read permission, you basically get it. The IPCS, no access. The admin directory, no access. But the MSF admin directory, we can access with the using of read write command. So, this kind of thing, we can easily get it by the using of like the assembly map. Okay, so for the uh, confirmation of that particular like username, so I just write the username that is a root for uh, taking the admin panel. If we got the admin panel, so just write the root name, root, just try to access now. So, the username root is not enabled on that particular, you are not available on that particular uh, machine. That's why it is not giving me the admin access and it is showing me that is the authentication error. So this kind of thing you can use and after that you will get the result. So if you are just trying to log in with another uh, user, like uh, there is a, another user available which is having a name of like user and the password is also a user. So let's try to with this username. So now just look at here. We get the same result, but this time we can access the user as a read write permission in the home directory. So this kind of thing you can easily get it by the using of like such command that is the assembly map. So I hope so guys the command is clear to all like what type of thing you can get it if you are using this command assembly map, right? Clear to all? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so the next thing that is the nmap command. Okay, guys, so if you are trying to find out a vulnerability which is related to like a SMB circuit, so if you can use a script which is available in a nmap and with the using of that script, we can easily find out is there any type of exploit is basically available on that particular uh, SMB service or not in that target machine. So, following script attempt to detect if the Microsoft SMB version 1 service is vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability as that is MS. 17010 like a eternal blue even and you can also try with exploit with the using of eternal blue type of vulnerability which have live in a meta exploit framework and the vulnerability is actively exploited by the wanna cry as and petia ransomware and the other malware so you can easily activate that vulnerability and exploit that with the using of that ransomware services so firstly, you need to find out the particular vulnerability. Is it available on that particular target machine or not? So how you can find out with the using of nmap hyphen hyphen script is basically defining the script for uh, the option is basically using for denoting the script. That is the SMB one script. 
Hashtag is basically defining like uh, every type of SMB vulnerability script uh, is executed by this particular script command. Okay. So hyphen P is basically denoting the port numbers and the 139 and the 445 is basically a particular port which is used on that particular SMB service. Okay. And a host name you need to define. So just I'll just going to copy this thing and just paste it over my terminal. And just put the IP address, guys, 192.168.91.134. Just press the enter and get that. Done. And map is using a script that is an NEC script. That is a NMAP search engine, NMAP scripting engine, right? So NMAP scripting engine basically liable to find out every type of vulnerability which is available on that particular script, NEC script. And that language is basically using via the scripting code that is a Lua via that map. So now just look at here, guys. It is uh, scanned. There are two ports that is 1939 and the 445. And after that, it is giving me a result like SMD NS10054. Is the false it means that vulnerability is not available here the 061 vulnerability is not available here even as the rgsbc dos service is also not vulnerable here so it means that the server is not vulnerable by this particular these services okay clear guys so we will also discuss about that particular smb exploit later once we are just going to discuss about the uh, exploitation phase like after the enumeration we will cover the vulnerability assessment phase and after that we will cover the exploitation phase so i guess uh, day after tomorrow once we are just connect the class so we will discuss about the exploitation phase so we will see in that class we will see the smb exploitation also okay now let's we discuss about the next thing that is the enumeration part of the like e enumeration this tool is basically uh, enumerate the linux system is there any type of Linux system is basically used in on the server so you can easily enumerate with the using of for enum for Linux. So take a look at the following screenshot and over uh, and observe how we can find out the uh, username present on the target host enumeration. Enum for Linux is basically a tool for enumerating information from the Windows and the Samba service. So how we can get it with the using of hyphen A. Hyphen A is basically denoting the IP addresses. Okay, so with the using of that one, we can easily get the details. So let's try to exploit this one. Just use this one. So, anum4 hyphen h and the press enter. So you will get the result. Hyphen o is basically get the OS details. Hyphen a is basically to all simple scan like hyphen u, s, g, p, o, and i. So with the using of hyphen a, you can scan every type of command which is available here, right? So this is the benefit if you are using that one. Even in the hyphen U is basically getting, giving you the user list which are available on that particular server. So this kind of thing is basically used by that particular and user, anum for user, yeah, anum for Linux, right? Okay. So let's try to use that particular option hyphen A and 192.168.91.134 and just press the enter. So after that, you will get the result. These are the username, default username, which is available on that particular machine. And once they are just checked, it is showing me the server does not allow the username and the password aborting the connection. So no, it is not so big deal because if you are not get it, so don't worry about that. We will check later, like what type of things are also available on the particular server. Okay. So don't worry about that, guys. So the next thing we can easily check like hyphen U and hyphen O for the operating system scan and the user links. So just put it the user list like uh, 192.168.91.134 and just press the enter. So it, it's a scan and after it will giving you the detail like uh, no users are basically related to these usernames. Okay. So we can get the custom list also like hyphen u, small hyphen u if you are denoting, yeah, username if you are denoting. So we can set the default username also. But uh, don't try to this at this time because we need to check the other commands also. So we will check this later. We will check this thing later. The next thing that is a telnet command, guys. So the telnet is basically the SMTP enumeration can be performed in many ways. The easiest way to do this by the connecting the SMTP service port. 
to the target with the telnet so with the using of telnet we can easily check is there any type of smtp enumeration is basically yeah smtp users are basically available on that particular target machine or not so we have seen this in the scanning and the banner grabbing the telnet with the using of telnet we can uh, get the details with the using of port number so telnet is basically a type of command guys and the type of port also and the type of service so not a port that is service actually but telnet is also a type of tool and with the using of that tool you can easily get the details so just use a 192.168.91.134 and just use a port number that is 25 that is a smtp port number right now just press the enter and after that you will see So after that, guys, just look at here. Um, the SMTP service is accessed by this particular telnet command, and uh, the connection is established. So we can use to verify is there any type of username is basically available on that particular server or not. So how we can check it with the using of VRFI command. So just use the VRFI verify and just put the username that is the admin. So I'm just going to check is there any admin is basically available on that particular metasploit table so just press the enter so it is giving me the rejected like the address is rejected it means the admin is not available okay let's try with another one brfi with the msf admin that is a username just press the enter so you can see here the msf admin is basically available with the id that is 252 the next one Okay, so I hope so. The point is clear to all, right?
okay guys so i hope so uh, this is sufficient for the today's session and uh, just practice all the things all the type of tools which i am uh, uh, giving you yeah which i have already shown you on this particular today's session as well as the yesterday session also just try it and uh, use that tool so you will get the multiple details regarding that particular information right yes okay great okay sir thank you okay guys so just wait a minute guys i'll just put the attendance of you okay that's it so we will meet at tomorrow kal milte hain aur aage ki cheeze cover karte hain apne iske andar jisme hum innovation part ko thoda